I don't normally like making videos like these, where it's straight up just, oh, a player is bad. That's our topic. The player is bad. And like, we're making a video. But like, I don't like doing this, but I feel like contextually speaking, when you talk about some of the money that has been committed to this player, as well as the circumstances of the team the past few weeks, you could very well say that there is a conversation like this that needed to be had. We're going over to the Detroit Red Wings and talking about former Ottawa Senator and Chicago Blackhawks forward, Alex Dabrinkat. And yes, you know, we're talking about Detroit, so we'll get the elephant out of the room at the beginning of this video here. The Wings lost to the Caps yesterday. In regulation. They got goalied. Patrick Kane scored in the last two seconds of the game, but ultimately it is a 2-1 to one defeat at the hands of Alexander Ovechkin and Dylan Strom, which bring the Detroit Red Wings playoff odds all the way back down to a staggering 20 point something percent. Their odds were a lot higher before yesterday's regulation defeat at the hands of the Washington Capitals, but the fact is, the Wings played the better game. They had more shot opportunities, they had better chances, and they just got goalied. Alex Lyon, unfortunately, could not make the two saves he needed to make, and Charlie Lindgren, on the other end, made all the saves he needed to. Except, of course, on the very last shot of the game. But when it comes to Patrick Kane getting the wings on the board to break the shutout and to at least give some stat padding capabilities from this game, I wanted to talk about Alex Dabrinkit because case in point, his profile and his statistical progression this season in Detroit has been very questionable to say the least. Alex Dabrinkit, who, by the way, will preface this entire conversation by saying that he is signed to a $7.875 million contract, which takes him till the end of 2026-2027. He'll be making this amount of money until he is 30. Alex Dabrinkit this season has scored 60 points in 78 games played. Now, that number is actually not bad, and he's on pace for about 63 total points over the span of 82 games. He's got 24 goals and on pace for about 25, so if you take a look at the numbers holistically, I mean, this doesn't look like that bad of a sample, right? But it gets worse when you talk about Dabrinkit and the fact that in his last five games, he's only got one point, and in his last 10 games, he's only got six points. Now, if you go over to his game log, it gets even worse, because one of the big sells that Alex Dabrinkit had as a member of the Ottawa Senators coming over to the Detroit Red Wings was that this guy could be a sniper. When he was in Chicago, when he was playing with Patrick Kane, he had two 40-goal seasons. He was one of the top goal scorers in the NHL in both of those years. Sure, part of that had to do with the fact that Patty Kane was setting him up, but still, Alex Dabrinkit and his goal scoring was the main part about his profile that made him an attractive option. He was a small guy, he was a snipey guy. He paved the way for other players in this same mold, like Cole Caulfield, to get drafted into the NHL and have significant hype. Dabrinkit's only 5'7", 165, and because of this, he was only taken in the second round of the 2016 draft when he was initially eligible. But ever since he had proven that small guys can still be scoring guys, it was a pretty big shift in the NHL perspective of the profile and of the player himself. So to see Dabrinkit head over to Detroit and have a really good start to the year, he was potting in goals, he was one of the top goal scorers in the entire NHL, Take a look at this. In his first, what is that, seven games on the season, Alex Dabrinkit scored nine goals. He was at the top of the NHL for a good chunk of the beginning of the season, so if you do the math right here, 24 goals in 78 games played minus the nine goals he had scored in his first seven, Alex Dabrinkit since the end of October has only scored 15 goals in 71 games played. That's roughly around a 17 goal pace over the span of a full 82. And sure, Dabrinkit has been getting assists here and there lately, I mean he'll get a few assists once in a while, as we had said he's got 6 points in his last 10 games, but still. The fact is, this guy was brought on to be a sniper, he's making $7.8 million a season, which is, let's say, top 6 sniper caliber money, and the only time he actually provides significant goal scoring is in the first two weeks of the season? And the fact is, when it comes to the Wings and how they've been performing as of late, Alex Dabrinkit has only one point in his last, what is that, six games played, and when you talk about the 
dire nature of all these games, the fact that this is the most important hockey being played in Detroit literally in like 10 years pretty much, the Wings haven't been this competitive, this good in a very long time. Now, you're in a position where Patrick Kane is here. He's been getting a few points once in a while. Look, I'll say that Kane hasn't been, like, 100-point caliber good, but he's still okay. He's still producing points every single game, pretty much, and he's been finding ways to put the puck in the back of the net. Alex Dabrinkit, on the other hand, has not been capable of doing that. And when it comes to some of the reactions, what I wanted to do was take a look at the post-game thread of the Washington and Detroit game from yesterday and talk about what some other Wings fans are saying about Alex Dabrinkit. Now, I'll preface this conversation by saying that the post-game thread is, very self-explanatorily, posted after after the game. So a lot of Wings fans that are responding to this thread are kind of pissed off. Maybe if they had cooled down a little bit, they wouldn't be as heated or they may not have been as harsh, but you kind of get the vibe here, right? The game just ended. The Wings lost in regulation. They couldn't get by a hot goalie. They're frustrated. So let's go out there and read some of these comments here. Kakarot's left... No, okay, I'm not going to read that. Went out there and said, can someone find Alex Dabrinkit? Because he's obviously lost. One goal since late February. Effing pathetic for a player of his caliber. He didn't even see the ice in the last five minutes. How damning is that? Mid-game, I thought they should have just, well, healthy scratched him. I don't care how much we pay him. Put someone in who might score. Foster's Fab goes out there and says that it's pretty sad when he isn't an extra attacker or rarely seen in the power play. We need to bring it to find his game and help this team instead of relying on just Larkin, Raymond, and Kane. Yeah, Alex Dabrinkit has definitely been a letdown as the season goes on. He's definitely worth having around still, but dude just cannot score like he could in Chicago, which is wild considering he's getting to play with Kane still. There are some more comments here saying, He's so bad, we have so many horrible contracts, Hall, Dabrinkit, Cop, Petrie despite having one year left, many players have regressed since their last winning streak, this is uncoaching as well, I could remember barely any scoring chances we got that were grade A. Lalonde will obviously say though that we got looks. And the devil's advocate point of view here is presented in this reply. Honestly, I'm not sure that he was ever really that good to begin with, and unfortunately, he's one of those players that's absolutely useless if he's not scoring goals. But hey, he does have 60 points this season. He was obviously better even a few months ago. He's just not scoring, like, at all anymore. Another thread says, yeah, that contract is going to haunt this club, but hey, he's got 62 points. This is one of those arguments where, yes, stats-wise, he has been fine, but when you bring a guy in to score goals, and in the most critical part of the season, he cannot be relied on to score goals or even help sustain offense, it's okay to call him a disappointment at this point. And so, that is particularly why I wanted to make this video. It's because even though Debrinket as a whole has had a good statistical outline for this season, this is one of the most important players on the team, just sorting by cap hit. He's making $7.8 million a year. That's important. And he's supposed to be a goal-scoring guy. So when he has one goal, spanning back to the beginning of March, end of February pretty much, that right there is pretty damning as to what he's bringing. He's got one goal in his last, I'm gonna manually count this up right here, 19 games played. That's it. One goal in 19 games. That's almost a quarter of a season. That's four goals a year on a pace that he's got. And sure, hockey fans can be kind of fickle. We all recognize that at the beginning of the season, he was this amazing goal-scoring threat. He was putting everything in the back of the net. He was on top of McDavid. He was on top of Matthews. He had more points than all these guys and goals too. So... Dabrinkit had had a really good streak at the beginning, and he wasn't even playing with Kane back then. Like, you gotta remember, Kane didn't sign on till later on, but just seeing the evolution take place between Alex Dabrinkit from months ago in October to Alex Dabrinkit now, it's a completely different player, and not in a good way. So, if you're a Detroit Red Wings fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Alex Dabrinkit at this point in the season, and what are your thoughts as to what needs to change? How can he get back to being a sustainable scorer? He doesn't even need to be as good as he was at the beginning of the year. Like, I'm not saying he needs to get nine goals every seven games the Wings play, but just score at a pace that's sustainable. One goal in 19 games? That's terrible. Please. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Alex Dabrinkit, especially after the game that we had seen yesterday against Washington. Was there anything else that you had noticed that you think is worth talking about? I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Roll 9 and bye.